Hello my viewers. Today I'm going to finally show you something about superheat. And I'm going to do it all with the field piece HVAC guide. First thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out what the wet bulb and the dry bulb is. First we'll turn the HVAC guide on to superheat. Also of course we put the ATH4 on T1. Here's the dry bulb thermal couple right here. Okay, the refrigerant is going to be R22 and we'll scroll down here to the outdoor dry bulb reading and we'll hit enter and then now it'll read the outdoor uh, dry bulb temperature which is 81.1 or so. By the way I wet the wick on my wet bulb thermocouple here. Alright I'm going to hit here in my air handler and I have the wet bulb. Let me show you. See? Wet bulb. I have the wet bulb right there on the inside of the return. And what I do here is I take the ATH4 and I'll set it to T2 because I have the thermocouple here on T2. And right now I'm getting like 63.6. I put my gauges on the high side and the low side. Right here as you can see. Alright, I'm looking at my compound gauge on my gauges and it looks like I have a 65 PSI G reading on my suction line. So Okay, I'm going to enter that manually in the HVAC guide. That's a 65 PSIG reading and hit and I'll hit enter to lock it in. And my suction line temperature. Um, also I have my temperature accessory clamped onto the suction line. It's attached right now to my HS33 meter and I'm reading a suction line temperature of about 51.5, 51.4. I'll go ahead and manually enter that at uh, 51.4. So, let's see. Go ahead. fifty one point four degrees hit enter and that will lock everything in and then I can scroll down here here's the output it says here that my target superheat would be sixteen point four my actual superheat though came in at thirteen point eight the vapor saturation is thirty seven point six degrees the actual superheat is close to the target superheat which indicates adequate let me scroll down here a little bit adequate refrigerant charge for a fixed restrictor using a standard superheat table test the airflow of the system with the target evaporator exit temperature test to ensure that the evaporator airflow is correct. Let's do that. Now I've placed both my dry bulb and wet bulb thermocouples inside of the return at my air handler. Alright, now I've entered a dry bulb reading of 75.6 and a wet bulb of 62.4. I'm going to put this dry thermocouple inside of my the supply end, end of this evaporator and see what I get. All right, I got a dry bulb inside the evaporator supply of 51.8 degrees. Okay, here's the results. It says that the actual evaporator exit dry bulb temperature is below the target evaporator exit dry bulb temperature which indicates 
low airflow across the evaporator coil. Increasing airflow can be accomplished by eliminating restrictions in the duct system. Okay, or increasing the blower speed, cleaning filters or opening registers. After corrective measures are taken, repeat measurement procedures as often as necessary to establish adequate airflow range allow system to stabilize for 15 minutes before repeating measurement procedure. I find that to be really interesting. Okay, overall I found the HVAC guide to be an excellent tool to have. I was impressed that it picked up the fact that my blower motor was actually set a little on the low side and that's mainly because of the variable speed drive that I have connected in my air handling system. The maximum setting that I had on my variable speed drive was 50 Hz. I may have to increase that to as much as 60. So we'll see how that goes. And before I forget, please visit Field Peace Products and he'll be glad to help you anytime you have any questions regarding Field Peace Products. I'll put a link over to the side where you can visit his channel. Field Peace Products.